President Obama, are you listening? I think the other issue is that you have a whole group of people who are the single female head of a household. And yes, cut off welfare tomorrow. What will they do? What will be their immediate response? At what price to their small children and to their uh, uh, middle-aged children? Uh, yes, they'll get a job. In fact, the statistics show that women, in fact, are the most successful through the Absolutely. employment program. But what has to supplement that, typically, is the provision of some kind of daycare arrangement. Either the individual woman has to earn enough money to be able to pay privately for her daycare, or in fact she is, quote, subsidized through this insidious, uh, corrupting program, set of programs run by the federal government, which in fact makes her employable and a taxpayer. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting uh, notion of trying to get people in a productive mode. Tom Sowell. It's incredible the, the, the way you start the story in the middle, uh, as if there's a predestined amount of poverty, a predestined amount of unemployment, and that the welfare system is not itself in any way responsible there for that. There is a predestined 20% of the bottom half of the population. I, I have never, oh, well, nonsense. that's always been true. And there's I, going I, to be 20% at the bottom. With you, with you. <laughs> it's also true that 20% of the bottom population doesn't have to be living on the government and ruled by the government. You mentioned for for example, the female-headed household. Many of those, in addition to the, the grown woman who has all the, all the kids, are teenage pregnancies. Uh, there's not a predestined amount of teenage pregnancy. I grew up in an era when people, and particularly blacks, were a lot poorer than today, faced a lot more discrimination than today, and in which the teenage pregnancy rate was a lot lower than today. I don't believe there is a predestined amount of teenage pregnancy, a predestined amount of husband desertion. Uh, the, uh, Gutman has done a study of the black family showing that this whole notion that this is, the black family has always been disintegrating, that that is nonsense, that his, his studies go up to 1925, the great bulk of black families were intact, two-parent families up through 1925, and going all the way back through the era of slavery. So it is now only within our own time that we suddenly see this inevitable tragedy which the welfare system says it's going to rush in to solve, but which it is itself a, a part. We're talking about a very small group. We're talking about 12% of the families are not intact are not two-parent families at any one you period mean, of time. I mean among welfare recipients no, or the No, among the pub public at large. We're talking about 12% of the families. 12%. That's right. That's a small number. But we're not of those on welfare. We're still talking about a significant component of the bottom 20% that are the bottom 20%. Whether they are above the poverty line or below the poverty line, they are still the bottom 20%. And the issue is, what is the responsibility of the other 80%, if any, toward does, those does individuals? Does your program plan to eliminate there being a bottom 20%? No, but it intends to raise the bottom 20%. So you're raising them by having, more, by having more illegitimacy, more unemployment. That's I'm not making them, be, them have illegitimate children. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, that's clear. Oh, I, I think, <laughs> oh, you, you, don't, you don't have to do that. You simply subsidize it. We as human beings don't have a responsibility, but I hope we have a compassion and an interest in the bottom 20%. And I only want to say to you, that the capitalist system, the private enterprise system in the 19th century did a far better job of expressing that sense of compassion than the governmental welfare programs are today. The 19th century, the period which people denigrate as a high tide of capitalism, had the, was a period of the greatest outpouring of eleemosynary and charitable activity that the world has ever known. And one of the things I hold against the welfare system most seriously is that it has destroyed private charitable arrangements which are far more effective, far more compassionate, far more person-to-person -person in helping people who are really, for no fault of their own, in disadvantaged situations. I have to disagree with